Awesome. Well, excited to, to be here. I mean, I guess, as you can probably imagine, helping co-found Encino and everything and being a part of Live Oak and whatnot before that, I'm very excited about the startup scene. I'm sort of a startup junkie, as you might suspect, given that I'm now working on something new. Um, so with that, so Rayleon, if you're not familiar with who, you are, who we are, and I'm sure you're probably not since we started just about a year ago, uh, I like to call what we do a growth platform for brands. Uh, in simple terms, we help brands increase their revenues really by focusing on their existing customers versus more of what you'd call the top of funnel or sort of user acquisition side. Um, so that's kind of what Rayleon is in a nutshell. Um, I'm not going to spend too much time on that just because we're not here to talk about Rayleon. In this case, we're here to talk about sort of another part of these, this technology, which is blockchain. Uh, so next slide. So before we dive in, um, there is a reason there's a bunch of hammers on the slide behind me. So when it comes to uh, technology, one of the things that I always like to focus on is uh, not the technology itself, but like what are we actually trying to solve here? So what often happens, right, is we talked about AI, we've talked about generative AI and chat GPT and things of that sort. We're talking about, we're gonna about be talking about blockchain here, uh, but these are all, all ultimately just technologies, right? They're all ultimately hammers, and a hammer is only actually valuable if there's a nail to hammer it into. Otherwise, it's what my kids like, which is ultimately just a stick with a rock at the end of it. It might be fun to play with, but it's not ultimately actually valuable to a business. So when it comes to all these technologies, one of the things that I always just like to emphasize and even remind myself of, which is these technologies are cool, they're great, they can do amazing things, but if they're not actually solving a meaningful problem, they are completely worthless. So it's just, especially if you're thinking about starting a company, if you're thinking about trying to raise venture capital, whatever it might be, make sure that you're not just excited about the tech, but you actually find something meaningful to solve. So I wanted to kind of couch really, you know, what I'm gonna be talking about blockchain in that because I'm gonna talk a little bit about blockchain, but more specifically, more specifically, I'm gonna focus on one of the areas, sort of problem areas that you can actually, um, you know, you could apply yourself to kind of see, could blockchain be used to sort of solve things in a particular area? So with that, Let's talk about first what blockchain is not. Next slide. Bitcoin is not blockchain. So we're just gonna kind of level set on that. And actually, before I go further, raise your hands. How many of you are familiar with blockchain or like have a good concept of it? Okay, that's actually way more than I would have expected. There's a lot of crypto junkies in here then, that's great. <laughs> um, so Bitcoin is not blockchain. It runs on the blockchain, but Bitcoin is ultimately a cryptocurrency. Uh, so just sort of a little bit of a distinction. Sometimes when I talk blockchain, they're like, oh, that's awesome. So like you do things with Bitcoin. I'm like, not exactly, not exactly. Uh, so next slide. So what blockchain is actually is it's a decentralized database that you can ultimately, anybody can add anything to uh, that uses digital assets. So to kind of restate that, right? So blockchain is a decentralized database, right? That means that no single person owns it and anybody as a result can actually add to it meaning sort of it's permissionless, uh, and part of its strength is around having these digitized or these digital assets. So what does that actually mean in practice? Let's go next slide. So we'll use sort of an example here, right? So Tim, you know, from Co-Founders Capital, he's up in Raleigh, I'm down here in Wilmington. Let's say that I, that I want to send Tim some money. Yeah. Right, well, in today, right? <laughs> hey. it's, it's great, right? Why not? <laughs> so, Today, what I would have to do is I'd have to go to a bank and open up a bank account. I'd have to put my money into that bank account. And then Tim would have to go to a bank and open a bank account. And then I could go to back, back to my bank and tell them to transfer that money to Tim in his bank account. And then he'd have to wait three to five business days, depending on whether you're over a weekend, to receive those funds. And what's funny, right, is like, as I share that example, everybody's like, yeah, like, you're just talking about a bank transfer, so what? Well, the so what is that if you go to the next slide, so the bank is the middleman here, right? And this works, right? I mean, this, this, this is functional. Like, it's not something that's, it's not broken in terms of like, this works every single day across millions of people and billions of dollars. Uh, but the problem, right, is that there is in fact a middleman that's present that makes it less efficient, that makes it take longer, that makes it cost more. So if you go next slide. So what happens then if this story is replaced with blockchain in the middle instead of a bank? Right, so the story instead is something that's closer to what I'd say Venmo looks like, except for they're also you know, privately owned. So in this case, right, if I was using blockchain and I was gonna send something to Tim instead, I'd pull out my phone, I have a digital wallet, my money is already in it, and I'd be like, Tim, what's your, what's your wallet address? Like an email address. He'd tell me it, I'd punch it in, I'd hit send, and in a matter of a couple seconds, he'd have the money, right? Very much like sort of an in-person interaction. 
Right? And the reason that becomes possible, the reason that blockchain can actually replace sort of the middleman of a bank in that case, is because it's decentralized, right? So anybody can add to it. You know, it's, you can have this sort of digital asset security and control, like the currency that we're talking about, and everybody can sort of have this kind of interaction. So that's sort of maybe to give that illustration um, of what does kind of this decentralization look like and mean. Um, so let's go to the next slide here. So a few examples. So again, I'm sort of, blockchain can cover quite a few things, but one of the most common questions is like, okay, great, it's like decentralized and so on and so forth. Like, what's the actual use case here? So we're narrowing in on one area in particular, which is replacing the middleman. So if you're thinking, okay, well, like, what can blockchain be used for? Think about like, what are all the kinds of things that have like a middleman, if you will, um, that could sort of be disrupted as a result of that, of that sort of, whether it's person or, uh, or organization being in place. So these are four examples that are highly successful in the blockchain or sort of crypto universe. So the first, the uh, unicorn looking thing and on, on the trading side is called Uniswap. Uniswap, if you're unfamiliar, is probably the largest decentralized, what's called a decentralized exchange or sort of trading platform in the US. Um, you know, them and Coinbase, which is centralized sort of compete um, but Uniswap, at least in the last couple of months, had, had sort of taken over that, that share. Um, so if you think about how trading normally happens, right? If you have a stock or if you like to do day trading or what have you, normally you have to go through an OTC. Um, so you kind of, you put your, you basically pace your trade, you go through all this different stuff. Uh, whereas if you're using Uniswap, literally anybody at any point tonight could go to Uniswap, you know, you could have a wallet and you could place a trade and in a matter of seconds your trade executes and you're done, right? Decentralized, they use some other cool blockchain and innovative things. That's kind of that idea, right? So they basically eliminated, say, like the fidelities and that sort of thing of the world that require that are required today to do any sort of trading. So middleman replacement. Ave on the lending side. So if you're familiar with a bank, right, you go to a financial institution, you go through this arduous underwriting process and all these different things. In the case of blockchain, anybody can go to Ave today. They can effectively apply for a loan, if you will, and in a matter of seconds, be approved or not approved, not by a person. I'd say not even exactly by sort of a, 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 an AI or underwriting system per se, but literally by code that runs on the blockchain. There is not an organization, a single sort of entity per se that runs it. It's like a public utility, right? And this is part of how blockchain can actually operate in this decentralized fashion and part of what makes it so disruptive and powerful. On the cryptocurrency side, so I have kind of Bitcoin up here. This isn't a middleman replacement, but it's just, it's so important that it's worth noting. So one of the I'd say most controversial things, if you will, about blockchain is that anybody can create a token. So today, you've got Bitcoin out there, it's obviously worth something. Uh, I could go and create Nathan coin. Now we can debate whether or not Nathan coin should actually be worth anything, but regardless of whether it should be worth anything, I can go and create a token on blockchain today that could be traded, that could be used for lending, that could be used for any number of other things. The same way that you can actually take that same idea and put real estate information against it or any number of other things, which is part of some of where the power of blockchain actually comes into play. Um, last one is sort of the art marketplace, so kind of last example on the middleman replacement. So if you think about if you were going to do something on the art side, whether it's digital or otherwise, what normally happens, right, is you go, great, I've got this piece of art, you know, somebody wants to buy it, I have to go, I have to, go to some sort of private marketplace and list it, and then I list it, and then somebody probably authenticates that, and then somebody else wants to buy it, and then I have to send the art to the art, you know, to the actual sort of centralized marketplace, and they look at it and they hold it until you get the money, and blah 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 blah, right? Versus Blur, for example, which is one of the largest marketplaces on, you know, from a decentralized standpoint. Um, literally, you can go and put your asset up there. It can be digitized or it can be already digital, and within a matter of seconds, somebody can go and buy it, and it swaps, and you're done. You know, very low fees, and that's sort of again that idea of. If you begin to take sort of the, the, that sort of private entity out and say, great, well, what if you made it decentralized? What if you sort of allowed it more of like a protocol-esque or almost like public utility sort of style thing to run this thing? You can begin to disrupt things like real estate. And actually, there's some companies doing that. And there's a lot of just different areas where if you think about extracting the middleman, where sort of the power comes from. So next slide. Yeah. So if you think about then blockchain, great. It's a wonderful technology. What's the actual problem we can solve here? This is just one. Where there's a middleman, there's an opportunity to be disrupted by blockchain. That's not, again, the only one, but I, again, I, just, I think about those hammers of, let's be focused here. So like, I don't want anybody running out here and being like, oh my gosh, blockchain, I'm gonna go start a blockchain company. Great, like, what's the nail that's actually valuable and we're sort of hammering in there? Um, apart from that, that's blockchain. Questions <laughs> at
right here. Yeah. Okay, so talk loud, please. Okay, so I hear winding, and there's an expense for that. I mean, what, what's in I mean, what's the ratio? What's the percentage that it costs to mine? So mining when it comes to blockchain uh, really depends on the kind of chain. So there's an idea. Um, so when it comes to how blockchains work, there's sort of two predominant you know, styles. There's proof of work and proof of stake. And depending on the style that's being used, one like Bitcoin, right, requires mining. Um, so the simple idea thinking about it is, so blockchain's a decentralized database, right? Every time something gets added to that database, it actually costs something. Because it's decentralized, a bunch of different people basically have to agree that what you're putting into the database is supposed to go where it's gonna go. And that's effectively the mining idea, right? Is the people that are spending that time and that computational power to say, oh, like, what, you know, I wanted to go and send money to Tim. I sent him that money at this time, and I am who I say I am, and he is who he, say, who he says he is. Like, it's decentralized not because nobody runs it, but because lots of people contribute. So the mining is basically all those people that are spending time saying this is a valid transaction. They get, uh, the mining is the payment effective that they get to say that. Does that answer your question? Over here. <laughs> Speak loudly, please. Okay. What is the speed that you think that this will be a hockey Is the question, how fast do I think blockchain will grow and get adoption? Was that the question? Um, I would say, I would, so blockchain right now is, is in a bear market, much like the general macroeconomic environment. I would wager that it will not go into more of a hyper growth mode again and for another year or two. So, a year or two. Last question. Can you speak to the relationship between blockchain and Web3? So the question was, what is the relationship between blockchain and Web3? Uh, honestly, it depends who you ask. Uh, I would say, Blockchain, uh, I think, is one of the underpinning technologies around Web3. Web3 tends to deal more with, like, more broadly with, like, digital asset ownership and, like, metaversal concepts. So, like, identity, owning art, owning avatar, gaming. Um, Web3 tends to focus a lot more on, like, the things that I own. So think about digitizing all the things, like, in, like, the real world, if you, the physical world, and putting them on chain. So, like, my house, right? That tends to be more Web3 oriented. Um, blockchain is just the underpinning technology that drives that. So again, you think about like the hammer versus nail. Blockchain is just sort of you know, the tech behind some of the Web3 concepts that people are chasing problems with. There was one more question back here. Who, who asked the question? Was it, what do I think about decentralization and cloud and blockchain? Yeah, it seems like a really interesting new trend that's, that's the, the future and it's forward of uh, both the So, uh, I'm debating how honest of an answer to give you. So, I, I think- Do you need another beverage? Yeah, that's right, maybe another beverage here. Uh, I, I think not unlike AI, and I think Tim asked the question earlier, a lot of companies uh, tack on decentralization, right? It's like the kind of blockchain concept two different things to drive value up. Uh, honestly, I'd say decentralized cloud, while I think there are merits to it, feels a lot like a hammer looking for a nail more than a bunch of nails that need a hammer. And I think, frankly, like, there's a lot of things in the blockchain universe and the AI universe that match that same problem where there's a lot of people running around with chat GPT or open AI hammers trying to find an actual nail, a problem, when one may not be quite prominent yet. So it could be that in five or 10 years, you know, that, that is more needed, but from a lot of what I've seen and having ran, you know, been a part of a big cloud company, uh, I have not seen that problem particularly yet.